Hello everyone, how's it going? Uh, welcome to this week's episode of Color Something. I'm gonna just be uh, going through all the drawings I did this week and coloring them up. Without any further ado, let me go ahead and dive into our first one. Alright, so starting off we got um, Sin uh, the lovely Mrs. DJ here on Twitch uh, wanted me to draw, or yeah, she wanted me to draw uh, a visual interpretation of all dogs going to heaven. So let's see, we got here, we got a couple of dogs here eating edible frisbees. They can catch them and eat them. We also got a fair number of dogs uh, flying around with angel wings. And we got a dog chasing a bone also with wings. And we got another dog here who noticeably, unlike the other dogs here, doesn't have a halo because it doesn't say necessarily good dogs or bad dogs go to heaven. All dogs go to heaven. So this is probably a not so good dog, but he's still in heaven anyway and he's uh, having the time of his life chasing this uh, mailman. And uh, yeah, all the clouds are bone shaped. And so yeah. That's, uh, that's Dog Heaven, or at least a peak of it. It probably goes way beyond what I've drawn here. But uh, this is just a little glance at it. So yeah, let me go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna probably start by coloring this dog, this first dog. I've kind of, you know, been thinking about how I want to do this coloring stream going forward because a lot of the time, most of the time I've kind of been just saying, okay, I'm going to color this, this color, and color this, this color, and then after a while I just kind of start just, I just don't really say anything, I just kind of color silently and just let it speak for itself. But uh, if you're currently watching, by all means, uh, don't feel uh, shy about making conversation if you want to ask me anything or just talk about anything in particular go ahead and drop it in the chat oh there's that gap first gap of the day fix something there really quick all right yeah so it looks like yeah there's a gap here let me fill that in Sure, that, that looks good. Looks good. I'm trying to color the uh, frisbee here, kind of like a, a dog treat. When I was drawing it, I my mind immediately went to, oh, they're like chocolate frisbees. Oh wait, dogs are uh, 
dog yeah chocolate is bad for dogs so maybe that's probably not the best way to go though in heaven chocolate might not be poisonous to dogs Got that dog colored in. Let me go ahead and do this other dog here. And I gotta admit, when I was drawing this dog, I was kind of I had in mind uh, uh, Doug's yeah, the cartoon Doug. Uh, his dog, I think his name was Pork Chop. That's kind of who I had in mind when I was drawing this.
Okay, so I admit I'm using kind of an <laughs> odd color for uh, coloring this particular dog. I just kind of want to break out of the, you know, I already did a gray dog, a yellow dog, and a brown dog. So I kind of wanted to, you know, break away from that a little bit and do something a little different. You don't usually see green dogs, <laughs> but then again, you know, this is dog heaven, so the rules of the mortal world don't apply here. Maybe this dog uh, arrived in heaven and just decided, oh, I want to be green, so he became green. Let's focus here on the uh, <laughs> kind of the demon dog here that's uh, chasing the mailman.
pretty sinister song I got playing here right now. Right now I'm uh, alternating between my regular playlist and my uh, creepy playlist. Uh, next week I'm gonna start. I'm gonna transition over fully to the creepy stuff. It's just like I've kind of been gradually spookifying my channel over the course of October. I've got uh, four drawing and four coloring streams this month, so this is the second coloring stream. About halfway through the month right now, it's the 16th. Uh, so yeah, starting next Wednesday, I'm going to really start upping the creepy factor. I've kind of already, you know, added some Halloween colors to the Color Something logo and the background's purple. But I'm going to be making some more little changes and then the final stream I do on Halloween, the week of Halloween or the week before Halloween is going to be, you know, full on Halloween. I can start coloring in the just kind of the whole scene. I already got all the characters more or less figured out. I want to color that bone in something. Like maybe make it a really light yellow, just so it's not just white on white on white. Yeah, there we go. Because the wings are already white, so I want the bone to be a little look a little bit different. So yeah, a very light yellow. I think will do. Let me just go ahead and see what happens if I do this. Okay, I'll say this one has a gap, so I'll go ahead and close that up. And is everything else good? Looks like it, yeah. to do over here. Zoom back in. Alright, draw the line there, and there we go. Okay, what next? 
next. Oh, another white spot there. Okay, I think for the clouds, we're gonna do like a really a light blue, not white, but light blue. A light, uh, not a white, a light blue. Last cloud colored in. There you go. I'm looking at this devil dog here. I think I'm gonna make his uh, wings like a really light red. They're not pure white like the others because he's kind of a bad dog but you know dogs all go to all dogs go to heaven good and bad but this one's wings are tinted red because he's obviously a bad dog the rest of them are good dogs so they have pure white wings and i think that'll probably do it like i think the only other thing i can really think of is maybe like adding a gradient here, like maybe having a slightly darker shade of blue. Okay, let me see how this works. Okay, that obviously wasn't dark enough. If there isn't a, if it, there's a, if it's too small of a difference between the shades of blue, then if I try to, uh, divide it and then color this in, it won't work. There we go, that's better. It's a little darker than I want, though. You know what? No, I'll leave it as is. I think it's fine. I mean, maybe I could do a lighter blue. Yeah, I like that. Let me go ahead and add that gradient in. I think gradients are typically more interesting than just one solid color. I missed a spot here with the red. Let me color that in. There we go. All right, back to the gradient.
Okay, I think that's probably good. Let me zoom back out here, see if I can color this in. Missing any spots? No, I think that's good. Well, I guess I could do kind of a yeah. I can just finish the gradient off here, there in the corner. Okay, I think I'm good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. So let me go ahead and uh, bring up the larger view. There we go. All dogs go to heaven, even the bad ones that chase the mailman. All right, let me just make sure I save that because I don't want to lose all this work. on to the next drawing uh, so what I got here is uh, I, I have definitely have a thing for doing drawings based on puns uh, so we have a dog cop catching a frisbee a criminal frisbee to be specific uh, who's uh, spinning a safe lock wheel to break into the golden bone storage at the first national bank of Fido but he gets caught by he gets caught by the dog cop. Dog catching frisbee. It's corny, but I don't know, I like it. So let me go ahead and start on this. I'm gonna make this uh, dog prominently brown. Let's make his face brown, his ear, his uh, ears slightly darker brown. Then make his uh, police uniform blue, of course. kind of a gold badge there on it oh, and also have the gold badge on his uh, shirt then do a really dark blue for the brim I think that'll do it for the dog. The cop dog. I'll go ahead and turn my attention to the sign.
Alright, there we go. Now let me look at this. Do a gray color for the safe door. Okay, maybe a darker gray for the lock wheel. Doing this uh, reinforced seal border around the door. Of the whole screen there for a second. I gave him red eyes says you know he's bad. Okay. So I got all the uh, all these details for guys. So I'm gonna try and add some color to the background because this looks I, I like adding some extra color. So let me see what I can do. Maybe because it's kind of an intense situation, I could go with like a uh, reddish orange. Irene Pena, awesome to see you here. Um, this is only the second drawing. I can uh, bring up the first drawing I did really quick. Let me go ahead and save this. 
I do an end of show recap, but I don't know how much time you have, so if you're not able to stay around until the end, I can show you it now. Uh, hold on just a second. All right, there we go. Here's the uh, all dogs go to heaven. Even the bad ones. You can see this one here chasing the mailman. The rest of the dogs are good. They have halos and they have white wings as opposed to the red wings. Got edible frisbees. You got dogs chasing bones. You got bone shaped clouds. Looks like a pretty fun place. And uh, this uh, second one that I'm working on right now is a. Uh, it's a pun based drawing. It's a dog catching a frisbee. More specifically, a dog cop catching a frisbee trying to break into a bank. The first National Bank of Fido, that is. Into their uh, very uh, luxurious golden bone, sto golden bone storage. But he didn't quite make it in. Oh, and of course, his big gimmick, since frisbees are known for spinning, he. Uh, is able to rapidly spin the lock and try to break into the safe, but he just he just wasn't fast enough this time. Okay, so let's see. Right now I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do for the background color. Can we just do a pretty basic uh, oval here around the whole scene? Oh, um, you know what? I was going to do that one last. I would do these in alphabetical order based on what I saved the file name as. But since you're here, Irene, I could do it next. There's no reason for me to go not go out of order. I just kind of do it because it's already just sort of set up. They're alphabetized on my computer, so... But, yeah, I'll, I'll do that one next, since you're already here. Okay. I was going to think, but I wonder if I could maybe do like a more metallic version of this color just because it's, you know, so it can blend a little bit more with the safe. Yes, no. Hmm. No, actually, I think it's fine as is. Alright, let me see if I can do something about this little last little bit of white here. Looks like somebody forgot to uh, finish drawing the leg all the way in. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. I'm guessing his uh, name probably starts with an A. Just just a hunch. All right, there we go. Got that colored in. We'll color that in orange. And I'll go ahead and save it and bring up the larger view. So, uh, next up, for Irene Pena Music, thank you once again for uh, coming and hanging out. Gonna do, uh, uh oh, um, pardon me, uh, something appears to have gone wrong. I'll uh, fix that here really quick. There we go. Here we go, we got a Great Hippo's request where we have Great Hippo being saved by Underdog from the Ghost Pepper Tribe. Uh, for those not in the know, uh, Great Hippo is Irene Pena Music's husband who uh, usually streams with her. He, uh, they both play the guitar and sing and they do a really good show. Uh, if you're not already following Irene Pena Music, definitely go give her a follow. 
Uh, so he took a he did kind of a challenge uh, on their stream, I think last week, where uh, he ate a ghost pepper on camera, and uh, <laughs> it was obviously quite an experience. And he wanted me to draw underdogs, so I decided to uh, kind of flesh out the scene a bit by adding in the ghost peppers. And you also got the uh, gravestones here with Pepper Ann, Sergeant Pepper, and Pepper's Ghost. Which is uh, apparently a... Uh, it's, uh, I think it's something... It has something to do with the Disney Haunted Mansion. I can't remember exactly what it was. It was something I hadn't heard about before. Let yeah, me go ahead and start by coloring our hero underdog here. I'll admit, I've never seen the cartoon. I've heard of it. I've seen the underdog cartoon character here and there on the internet, but I haven't seen the actual cartoon underdog. And it's for that reason that I might need to look up what uh, his... Uh, colors are specifically okay so yeah all right i guess i was on the right track he has a red shirt and a blue cape the design's not 100 percent correct i was freehanding it well not even just freehanding it just going from memory there we go we got it's got his red shirt got his cape Yeah, when I, uh, draw a character from memory and it kind of ends up looking like a somewhat distorted version of what they're supposed to look like, I call it their, uh, <laughs> semi-distorted second cousin. <laughs> Remember I did that with the, uh, I did a drawing of Ghostbusters several weeks ago, like a while ago, like a couple months ago, and I drew the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man without looking at the actual picture of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. And he ended up looking a little odd, so I decided to call him the uh, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man's uh, slightly lesser well-drawn cousin. <laughs> and so this is Underdog's uh, slightly lesser well-drawn cousin, or maybe really lesser well-drawn, I don't know. They're, they're related somehow or another. But yeah, right now I'm going to go ahead and draw the hippo. Or well, I already drew the hippo. I need to color the hippo. Is that a gap? Nope. Okay, good. That's a gap. Let me fill that in. Irene, I really love your emotes. Um, I just uh, replaced the emote that I had in my one slot so far. I haven't gotten another slot open yet. But I have one emote slot open. And uh, up until a couple days ago, I had a Mr. my Mr. T emote. But since it is the spooky times right now, I decided to replace it with a Bat Cat. Which was another drawing I did several weeks ago. So let me go ahead and uh, drop some of those in the chat. And hopefully, I made the emote wall on my screen bigger, so hopefully they'll show up. Okay, there's one of them. Thank you, Irene. Yeah, there's a couple other uh, emotes that I made that I can probably switch out for that spot. I think it went to... Uh, October is over into November. I'll probably uh, replace it with something else. Uh, one of them is actually the 80s uh, Songbird Irene that you requested. So I'll definitely have to uh, put that in the emote slot at some point soon.
Um, also, Irene, I did download your uh, your album. I haven't listened to it yet. I'll probably do that uh, later. I didn't. I was tempted to do it on the actually have it playing in the background on my stream. I just didn't want to get a hit with copyright, so I uh, post my replays to YouTube afterwards. But I will definitely listen to it, and thank you for <clears throat> the free download. Irene, thank you. Wasn't sure if there was anything like regarding the record company that I needed to worry about. Uh, right now, the music I'm uh, using for my stream is uh, kind of a combination of uh, my playlist I've had for several weeks now like probably going back as far as like july and uh some new creepy songs that i found i uh right now i'm kind of just uh using them in tandem with each other next week i'm gonna just fully switch over to just all creepy music but since we're still only halfway through october i decided to you know kind of you know, gradually move towards the spooky side of things. Like, I think next week is going to be, like, my drawing theme is going to actually be, like, uh, spooky Halloween theme. Like, uh, last week was uh, Food with Faces, this week was Dogs. I think probably this next week I'm going to start, you know, doing a halloween theme show. I'm going to do two halloween theme streams, and then it'll be uh, the end of October. And I'll just go back to doing, I don't know, just random themes. I uh, try to do a song title theme every five weeks. That's kind of a pattern I've established. I'm rambling and not really thinking about what I'm doing here. Yeah, let me go ahead and uh, do like a really light bluish gray for the ghost peppers. So, uh, Irene, do you have anything fun going on today? I'm uh, kind of thinking about uh, trying a new recipe out after I do my stream. I uh, got a found end up discovering a recipe through uh, my cousin Scott for uh, some banana chocolate chip cookies that sound really good. I have one banana sitting in my kitchen that's getting pretty mushy, so I should be able to make use of that. Oh, 
cool, a new shtick. That should be fun. I look forward to it. Okay, there we go. I think I figured out the colors I'm going to use for the ghost peppers. Well, it's kind of a couple different varying shades of this uh, sort of ghostly blue. And then big red eyes that stand out. The red both because uh, they're kind of representing the spiciness, and they're also red because evil. So there's this kind of a double meaning. And yes, those cookies do sound really, really good. I uh, just made banana bread for the first time uh, a couple weeks ago, and it was super good, so... I could go for another uh, combination of bananas and baking. And certainly a much better use than actually eating the ripe banana, because I can't stand mushy bananas. They, the, the texture just kind of makes, just, it kind of just, it hits my gag reflex. Hey, Dreamer Seeker, awesome to see you here. Hope you're enjoying time with your family. Irene, thank you. Um, yeah, it's. I, I did it actually did work out pretty well. It's ghost. It's October. It fits. It was just kind of a spur of the moment thing too. I was originally just gonna have like actual just ghost peppers, just peppers. But then I decided, oh well, they're ghost peppers, so why not actually just make them real ghosts? Seeker, very cool. Cake is not something I've made yet. I've uh, I've made some uh, pretty nice desserts. I have not tried making cake. That'll that'll probably happen sometime soon. Let's see what else I've made. I've made like uh, cream cheese squares, which are kind of like cinnamon rolls in bar form. It's like you kind of put them in a casserole dish and you slice them up and they're like little bar, square shaped bars. But they're more or less like cinnamon rolls. Those are really good. I uh, made peanut butter bars, uh, chocolate peanut butter bars. So it's like a layer of uh, peanut buttery goodness topped with cho a layer of chocolate. I had made them. I had made them once before. I made them again last week uh, to bring in for my coworkers. And I just finally ate the last one last night because I really wanted to savor them. They're so good. And then yeah, I just made banana bread like a couple weeks ago, and that was also really good. I'm really liking, you know, the one of the definitely one of the perks of uh, starting cooking for myself is, you know, all these fun treats that I can now make on my own if I feel like doing it. Well, Dreamer Seeker, I hope it turned out well. I'm sure it probably will. Uh, the cake doesn't have broccoli in it, does it? That might that might be a red flag. 
If it has a, a broccoli cake, seems kind of suspect. Suspect. But if it doesn't have broccoli or garlic or onions, it's probably good. Oh yeah, and also a little extra note, uh, this particular ghost pepper is like making a last ditch ever to snatch the hippo for himself. You can see the other ones are just kind of here taunting him and going, ooh, ooh, ooh. Like they've already admitted they've lost, but they're just kind of just, you know, really savoring their moment to just go, ooh, you suck. Uh, but this one in particular is like, no, I will not let you get away. But he, he kind of does. <laughs> Underdog, you know, these ghost peppers are no match for underdog. <laughs> yes, yes he does, Irene. But you know what else sucks? A vacuum cleaner. But don't. I've I've pulled that joke on a couple of people. <laughs> I'll just randomly say, you know what sucks? A vacuum. It's corny. It's stupid. But I love saying I love making that joke. Actually managed to catch at least one person not totally off guard with it. Okay, let me see. I think I got all the ghost peppers colored in. So let me move my attention over to the gravestones or headstones, as it were. So yeah, we got Pepper Ann. Sergeant Pepper. Uh, his, uh, apparently his Lonely Hearts Club Band uh, was buried in a different part of the cemetery. Just him, himself, or may maybe him and his whole band are buried there, but that's pretty, that must be pretty crowded. I think, I think the sergeant himself was, you know, given special treatment to be buried alone, and the rest of his band is just kind of <laughs> buried collectively somewhere else. Kind of morbid now that I think about it. Okay. So let me go ahead and do like a couple of dark, darker shades of blue for the background. Actually, before I do that, let me go ahead and do the uh, grass here. Uh, Irene, technically both. And really, you can use both of those words in kind of a similar context. You know, this sucks or this blows. Kind of, you can kind of, they kind of mean the same thing in a certain context. Hey, you know what blows? A leaf blower. <laughs> but don't. It'd be, it'd be even better if I actually had a hi-hat and a drum to use <laughs> for that. Every time I make a bad joke, I could just <laughs> take one of the sticks and go, or take the sticks and go, ba dum tsh, with a real hi-hat and drum. But I think just using my mouth will do for now. Oh, looks like I got a gap to fill in. Uh, 
Oh yes, Irene, you can never have enough jokes. Okay, got the grass colored in, so let me go ahead and color in the background. I think we're going to do something similar to what I did for that uh, dog heaven drawing. going to just do kind of a two color gradient. It's fairly simple and it tends to look pretty good. I think it, I mean I think it looks good. Also gonna think maybe do kind of like a sort of a wavy pattern to kind of go along with the ghosts. Ah, uh, hold on. Looks like that. Uh, looks like there's a gap that I gotta fill in. No matter. There we go. And uh, looks like I got another one. Maybe one more right here. Okay, I think that should do it. Lighter shade for yeah okay I like that so I just got covering these uh, little spots here in the letters Sean C, good afternoon to you too. How are you doing? Irene, I'm so glad you like it. Is a uh, hippo there at the moment? Is he able to see it? Okay, I think that'll about do it. I'll go ahead and save it and bring up the larger view. Uh, Irene, good plan. Yeah, I'll be uh, sharing the, I'll be posting all of these in my uh, Draw Something Discord on the Brady Bunch channel. Or the, my Draw Something, the Draw Something channel on the Brady Bunch Discord after I've gotten them all cleaned up and ready to post. Save that one more time just to be safe. Okay, next up on the list. A yard sale. That's pretty cool. Uh, did you manage to sell everything? Oh, let me introduce this drawing before I get to work on it. Here's uh, for Christie's Coffee, who was super nice to uh, raid my show last Wednesday. Uh, she requested a dog holding a jack-o'-lantern, so I drew that. I also drew him in a sorcerer's outfit and drew a couple other jack-o'-lanterns, and also just kind of drew a basic scene of uh, kind of some dirt ground and some bushes and cloud, just a night sky in the background. Thought I'd flesh it out a little bit more beyond just the basic request.
And of course, thank you to Irene for uh, suggesting that uh, she uh, that Chrissy's Coffee raid my channel. I very much appreciate it, Irene. And uh, enjoy lurking. Uh, say, uh, Sean, if you wouldn't mind, um, been here for a little over an hour. I'm starting to get just a little crick in my, in the back of my neck. Um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, redeeming some frog monk points for a stretch or even a hydrate, I would not object. But only if you want to. Sorry, I don't want to force you into it. Irene, thank you so much. Oh, and Sean C, too. All right. So we're doing a double stretch. You guys and thank you Sean for the hydrates <sighs> uh, most of the stuff the rest is going to goodwill that's a good plan I'm glad you got most of it sold kind of a darkish purple-ish color for the hat. And the eyes are going to be kind of a white orange. Actually, no, I take that back. I'll make him uh, more of a darker brown. Or I'll just... <laughs> having a hard time making up my mind here. Okay, there we go. I'm good with that. beard here kind of reminding me of the uh, slug crossing guard oh Sean C that's good um <laughs> you know if you uh, lived close I would honestly let, maybe let you use my garage I got a ton of space in there well actually I mean, I'm still I'm still having other people uh, use it for uh, their own storage, but if it wasn't for them, my garage would just be literally 95% open space. All that's in there is my bike, <clears throat> so I don't really have a ton of use for it. All right, there we go. Colored in the amulet. Now let me go ahead and do the pumpkins. Oh, got a gap to fill in.
Now for the stems. Hmm, got a got a pretty set color scheme for how I like color pumpkins. Usually make the stem like this uh kind of dark yellowish green. Then I do like a much lighter shade for this uh the end of it. See, I got other pumpkins. The one that has wolf carved into it. Another one has a dog carved into it. And then this one has a paw print carved into it. And now I'm going to color in the stars and the moon. Uh, like a week or two ago, I actually uh, looked out and saw the moon. And it was like just this tiny little sliver it was like a dark it was darker color it was like a brown color it was like a brown it was like a little rotten brown toenail sitting up in the sky it was kind of amazing i think at this point the moon's uh definitely a little more full Uh, yeah, Sean C. Decluttering does feel good. It's something I probably should do more often than I do. Do it. Though, admittedly, my uh, I'm not. I'm not really. I don't really go and buy out buy a bunch of stuff. Most of the money I spend is on food, honestly. But as far as like, you know, extra decorations for my house, not really. I mean, heck, it's uh, halfway through the month and I haven't even really decorated it all for uh, uh, Halloween. Probably should at least add some decoration. Okay. Okay, let me see. Just testing to see how the color looks. Alright. Go ahead and make that the color for the ground. That laughing is unsettling. <laughs> Sean C, really? 
Okay, I feel, I guess I feel a little less bad now. <laughs> I mean, I think, maybe, I mean, maybe it's just the, the fact that I'll have to take it down in two weeks or just a couple weeks. That's why I don't really feel like putting it all up. I mean, sadly, I even feel kind of the same way about Christmas, but I'll admit I'll be a little bit, I'll push myself a little bit more with that to, you know, decorate, put my tree up, put up some tinsel. Got some, uh, actually, looking off to my side here, I got my uh, Christmas decorations here in the closet in this room. So I'll, I'll definitely decorate for Christmas, even if I have to, you know, really motivate myself to do it. Because uh, I'm going to have to take it down in two weeks. Uh, I don't want to put all that effort in. Like, I'll still put the effort in. It's Christmas. test that color one more time to be sure it looks good yeah I like that fine just need to close up a gap or two there we go Uh, so, uh, Sean, if you're uh, following me on uh, following my Tollbooth Publishers page on Facebook, um, I got an old Halloween book that I'm uh, planning on posting there in a couple days. You can already, uh, if you can look in the photos section and just go to the albums, you can find it. But uh, I'll just share it directly to the main page. But it's, uh, I wrote it in 2008, so I was in high school. It was pretty pretty long time ago. My The drawings in it are pretty, uh, they're, they're definitely, they're not as good as what I draw now, I don't think. But basically it's about me you know, getting a possessed Halloween costume and turning into a monster. I think that'll do it for this one. Let me go ahead and bring up the larger view. Alright, there we go. One more save just to be safe. Alright, next up we got uh, this request for John Kula's art. It's uh, dogs um, basically break, kind of breaking the fourth wall, or at least painting the fourth wall <laughs> with their paw prints. So 
So I'll go ahead and color this in. Start by coloring this one on the left. Actually, hold on a second. I'm gonna do uh, something kind of cool with the eyes, so I'll hold off on coloring those. This one's got a nice paw full of purple, his paw covered in purple paint, so he's leaving a purple paw print on the the fourth wall. We'll, we'll just call it the fourth wall. I was struggling to come up with a proper name for it when I drew this on Wednesday. I kept saying the viewer's view, which is really odd sounding. I'm just going to call it the fourth wall. So he has one, got one paw print colored in. Well, actually, that, that's his paw itself. Here's a, just a paw print that he left. Uh, that's the one he made before this one he's currently making. I kind of like this uh, this song that's playing right now. It's actually titled Zoinks Scoob. <laughs> Just the name alone had me interested. It's a pretty good one. Like Zoink Scoob, we're an EDM track. That's a pretty groovy song. And that was a very terrible Shaggy impression. I apologize. <laughs>
zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Uh, so, uh, Sean, uh, I can't remember. Were you? I'm pretty sure you were. At the, I'm pretty sure I remember seeing you at the quarantine party uh, Thursday night. Uh, did you stay for the whole thing, or did you uh, check out early? I mean, it ended up going until 11:30, so it was a late night. We got like a half hour of overtime in. <laughs> I remember the early days when it was uh, just a two-hour show, and overtime meant you know almost getting to three hours. Now the show is just three hours by default, so if we go into overtime, it's over three hours. And I typically wouldn't mind, but it was, you know, it was 11.30 at night on a work night. I had to get up at 6 a.m. the next morning. I was ready to go to bed. Uh, yes, yeah, Sean C., uh, yes, Week 80 was definitely one for the books. Or, well, they all technically go in the books. It was, uh, it was a really, yeah, it was a really good show. Actually, me and, uh, my dad were just, uh, discussing it. <laughs> uh, discussing that yesterday, I mean, he asked me how was the show, and I said, well, I kind of sound like a broken record, but it was a great show as always. And we kind of got on the topic of, like, you know, what... You know, he, what, he wants to, you know, how he wants to judge a stream he does. Like, you know, what's the, me what's the best metric to judge by? And he kind of was like, you know, the music, which I think, honestly, that makes sense. It is a music show. And what he was talking about was how, you know, a show can be really great in the moment, but the replay, it can be, like, just tonally all over the place. It can be going through so many different music styles in such a short time. <laughs> And typically when I re-listen to, to those replays, you know, I kind of just, you know, like, see it as reliving the show. So I don't really mind if it kind of goes all over the place. But I can kind of see it being a little awkward for somebody who hasn't, <laughs> who's just casually scro scrolling by and wants to have some background music. So they just, oh, okay, quarantine party number 70. So they hit it and... Yeah, you know, they start out thinking they know what they're in for, and then it'll just suddenly just go a complete left turn, and then it'll take another left turn and another left turn. And they'll just... To someone who wasn't there for the original show and knows what to expect, it could, you know, really throw them off. So I can see where he's coming from. Okay, so I said I was going to do something kind of cool with the eyes. Alright, so... I'm going to take the eye color I was going to use for this guy. Which I think was, uh... That?
I was going to use that for this guy. I'm going to actually use them for this one. Then I'm going to take the uh, gray eyes I would have used for this dog. Like this. And instead of putting them over on this one. Just kind of a funny little touch. It's like they swapped eye colors. Uh, Sean C, I do too. I do, I do enjoy the variety. That's one of the main draws of the show for me, I think. I like that it can, you know, vary from, you know, being 90s dance to current dance to just suddenly becoming hard rock to power ballads, pow, power ballads to uh, Partridge Family. <laughs> I remember there was, one, there was one week where he played the Partridge Family by request. That was funny. And actually, there was uh, one particular week where it was the Van Halen tribute show where he did uh, like an hour. He started off with like an hour of Van Halen songs. And then uh, because Johnny Nash had passed away that same week, he played I Can See Clearly Now. And that kind of got some conversation started in the chat about how, oh, I would have never thought you had this kind of music in your catalog. <laughs> And so he played a couple more songs along those lines. Uh, Etta James, Tell Mama. And it's funny because it was literally just Van Halen like 15 minutes ago. And now he's playing, you know, <laughs> Tell Mama from 1968. Totally different genre. But, I mean, great song. But just, <laughs> just kind of a total left turn from what had been playing just before that. But yeah, it's cool. There's very few boundaries for what gets played on the quarantine party. And yeah, Sean C, I also agree on uh, liking songs I haven't heard in a long time. And uh, hold on a second. I accidentally opened an app that I didn't want to open. Let me close that really quick. Let me see if I can... Get Yeah, I definitely like hearing songs that I haven't heard in a long time. Like, I uh, requested Sweet Talking Woman last night for ELO because, uh, or, I'm sorry, ELFO, because it had only been played twice in the 80 weeks of the show. Yeah, so I figured it was time to make that song uh, happen again. So there we go. I think that'll probably do it. I'll keep the background. I'll probably just keep the background white for this one. I mean, well, actually, I don't necessarily have to. Honestly, it might be more effective. It might be more effective in showing the uh, them painting the fourth wall if I add some color here in the background. So let me go ahead and. Uh, 
uh, zoom out again. Sean C breaking out the LFO moat. Awesome. Um, have you uh looked into uh the uh DJ Mike Brady merch shop, by the way? Because uh, we have uh the LFO logo on uh we got them on masks, we got them on uh like uh what is it called? It's like a thing you can pull over your head and you can wear over your mouth and also down to your neck. It's like a neck sleeve or something. We also got one of those. I have an LFO mask I've been wearing since it first made its appearance in the shop back in like October 2020. So a year ago. And I still wear it like five days a week on the way to work. held up pretty well There we go. Just kind of a little extra splash of color there in the background. I think that looks good. So, I think, uh, let me just color in that little extra white spot. And also this little extra white spot. There we go. I think this looks good. And I'll go ahead and bring up the larger view. time just to be safe I feel like there will be times where I feel like I've saved it and then it turns out I didn't save it and I just lose all the coloring progress I made and it sucks don't want that all right next up we got a drawing I did for myself uh, this is a uh, dog with a seem seemingly with an invisible pet he's just got a collar on a leash so you think okay but so I guess the uh, pet he has must be invisible no, it turns out that the collar is the pet. <laughs> this is an alternate universe where uh, dogs have collars for pets. Almost seems like kind of a, you know, like a shoe being on the other foot type of situation. Like, you know, collars are like, you know, a symbol that dogs are owned by somebody. No, this is a world where dogs own the collars. They've taken over the world. Where are the humans? No one knows. So let me see what I'm going to do for my color here. I'll go ahead and make this dog blue.
<laughs> so yeah, this uh, collar in particular is pretty vicious. This other collar just wants to have make a friend, and this one's just like, no, 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 no. Or arf, arf, arf. Since, and because it's a color I haven't color uh, I haven't I haven't done a pink dog yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a pink dog here. It's uh, not necessarily a girl dog. It can be a it can be a pink boy dog. But it's a pink dog. I guess you could actually technically call it magenta. Which, years later, all I can think of when I hear the word magenta is Blue's Clues. I think it was, like, Blue's cousin or sister magenta. That was basically, uh, blue. Basically, like, just like blue, but was, you know, pink. It's crazy how I haven't watched that show in, like, 20 years, and I can still <laughs> immediately link the word magenta to that show. This color is red. I'll make the other color blue. And the beads of sweat that are flying off of it are also blue. A much lighter blue. some a uh, little bit of grass there got kind of a patch of grass here that I'll go ahead and color in then uh, let's see I think to top it off we'll do like two little color splotches of, uh... Yeah, I think I know what to do here. So I'll do like a... Kind of a reddish-orange for the second sh scene because it's, you know, a pretty intense one. Uh, so like this. Like that color. And we'll just do like a, you know, pretty tranquil blue for the initial scene of him just walking his collar along. Ooh. 
It's like I left a gap open. There we go. Oh, uh, Sean C., I forgot to mention, uh, I uh, made a new emote for the channel. Uh, I still only have one emote slot, but I decided to replace Mr. T with uh, something that seemed a little more appropriate for the, the season. So I uh, have a Bat Cat emote now. Let me go ahead and drop a few of those in the chat. Can you see that one flying across the screen? over what I've done looks looks pretty good I didn't really think with the like really basic drawings like this one I definitely like to you know add some extra colors to flesh it out more I didn't go too crazy I just did these you know two color splashes to surround the two, the two scenes but I think it'll do So there's the larger view. All right, one more safe. Save just to be safe. All right, looks like we got two more to go. Uh, first off, we got this. Uh... Hmm. Got two. This was for uh, Dark Gamer One. Has uh, two medieval dogs uh, fighting a cat dragon, and it's not because there's a damsel in distress that's being kept behind the dragon. They just felt like going and fighting a dragon for no reason. They were bored. They had nothing better to do. This dog uh, brown. Hey, John Kula, it's good to see you here. Totally understand, church is important. But glad you could make it.
Captain Shaughnessy, yes indeed. Let's go beat up a dragon. I mean, they didn't really, I mean, they didn't have a whole lot to do in medieval times. They had, you know, they didn't have any video games or computers or anything, so they had to find some way to entertain themselves. So why not risk life and limb for the fun of it? Color the uh, spiked ball. Alright, that will do it for this guy. Except I want to change the color of that one little part really quick. There we go. Move on to this other dog here. Ah, uh, you can see I uh, drew his uh, <laughs> mouth just barely peeking out from behind, under his helmet. <laughs> behind his helmet, under his helmet. Uh, you can't even see this dog's mouth. Maybe he doesn't have one. you have to fill in there. Okay, next. Go ahead and work on uh, his... the front of his armor.
zoom out. Okay, now let's, uh, let's move on to the cat dragon here, who's uh, <laughs> kind of a semi-adorable abomination. got his whiskers, he's got his cat eyes, he's got big scary claws. Some uh, kind of medieval-esque music to go along with the medieval drawing. Let me zoom in here. I'm going to color in the flame that's bursting forth from his mouth. Or you could call it his fire hole. And uh, by my clock, it's uh, 3.04 p.m., so I've been at this for two hours now. I think these coloring streams actually take longer than the drawings, the drawing streams. color in that particular part. That part's going to be the sword. So let me uh, replace that with gray. Actually, hold on a second. There we go. Let me color this in gray. Gotta figure out the uh, what the color of his wings are gonna be. Let me 
see if I like this. That's, that seems to fit well enough. Go, make it, go ahead and make his eyes uh, yellowish green. Maybe. Maybe I'll make them red. Maybe I'll make them yellowish green and red. I'll make the pupils red. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Yeah, okay, I like that. for the uh, terrain that they're fighting on. I think I got a color in mind for this. main background color.
Just trying to decide on the uh, color I want for these clouds. Okay, I like that. I like that. Claws in. And I think I'm just about done here. Alright, go ahead and save it. Yeah, I think I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the larger view. All right, so let me save that one more time. And I'm going to bring up the last drawing I'm going to color today. Which for Irene Pena Music, who was here earlier, she said she was lurking. I don't know if uh, she's still lurking or not, but this was her request. It's a uh, three dog night. And it's literally three dogs at night, as SpongeBob would say. So yeah, you got this one dog here singing an old fashioned love song. You got this dog here named Jeremiah, who you can't understand a single word he says, but he sure does make some mighty fine wine. And you got a one is a lonely number, but three is a magic number, and you got three dogs here. So this is a truly magical moment we're looking at here. So let me go ahead and get to work on dog number one.
Dog number one on his banjo. Let me go ahead and work on those music note hearts. Or music heart notes. Got both kinds up here. Oh, and yeah, also I forgot to mention that uh, Jeremiah was a bulldog. So I made, I made him a bulldog because Jeremiah was a bulldog. That that rumor you heard about him being a bullfrog? Y yeah, no, that was a misunderstanding. He's a bulldog. Color in his uh, picture here on the fine wine box. As he's famously said about it, in his own words. Oh yeah, and I also, uh, <laughs> I forgot to draw the, uh, box of wine to sit on the ground, like, I drew the, the line for the ground <laughs> lower than the bottom of the box, 
so I decided to set it on top of something. I went with a chess set as a reference to their, uh, to Three Dog Nights, uh, one of their other hits, one of their other songs, Black and White. So I figured chess set, black and white pieces. Well, I mean, go ahead and just have the black and white be the colors for it. All right. Let me color in his name tag here. dog and a brown dog this last one I think I'll make him yellow three dogs so the rest of this is going to be coloring in uh the scene surrounding them which is basically just the moon the stars the sky and the, gr the grass so pretty straightforward got a lot of stars to color in though so this could take a minute Suddenly got very, very bright outside. There we go. So I got two more stars. Oh. 
suddenly got very bright outside again. Okay, and one more. Okay. Sky. for the grass, just make it a darker green. There we go. So I got left to, all I got left to do now is just uh, color in these little white spots in the letters. Okay, I'm gonna color in the music notes here for the one is a lonely number dog. I think it's only appropriate to make him blue because it's sad. He's feeling very blue. And I think that'll do it. Let me go ahead and save this and bring up a larger view. There we go, it's a three dog night. And that is it. That is all the drawings for this week. I think that was uh, eight total. Pretty good run, or pretty good lineup for the week. I'm gonna go ahead and do a my end of show recap like I always do, and then I will possibly raid out. And if there isn't anyone that I can find to raid, I'll just go ahead and end the stream here. But first the recap. They bring up a full size view here. So starting off, we have all dogs go to heaven. Got uh, all dogs, not just the good dogs, but even a bad dog here is uh, chasing the mailman. Then you got these other dogs just chowing down on edible frisbees, chasing after bones, just flying around in general. The clouds are all bone shaped. Looks like a good time. Next up, we got a dog cop catching a frisbee that's trying to break into a safe, holding all of the uh, golden bones. But the dog cop manages to catch him before he can do it. And of course, he's such a—he's really good at uh, what he does because you know frisbees are good at one thing, and that's spinning. So he can spin the lock wheel until it—I don't know—breaks off or falls off, and then he can just get right into the safe. But not this time. He was too slow. All right. Next up, uh, got a dog holding a jack o' lantern and a couple other jack o' lanterns surrounding him. And he's uh, dressed up as a wizard with a, a hat, a beard, an amulet around his neck. And that's all there is to it. But you know, it's a good, simple drawing. 
hold on. Uh, not sure what's going on here. GIMP is, uh, hello? Okay, GIMP was being very weird right now, right, right then, so, uh, apologize. Okay. Uh, next up, we got these, uh, two dogs, uh, painting the fourth wall with their paw prints. They, uh, got their paw prints all covered in paint, so they're, uh, painting, uh, the fourth, well, I, yeah, the fourth wall. They're painting the fourth wall that we're looking at them through. Uh, next up, we got a dog with a pet collar. Actually, both of these dogs have pet collars. One of them is clearly way more vicious than the other. This one just wants to have a friend and be and play with them. This one's not having any of that. Uh, then we got a uh, two medieval dogs uh, fighting a cat dragon. Because they had nothing better to do, they just, uh, they were bored, they decided to go, you know, fight a, fight a cat dragon. Simple as that. Alright, then we have a three dog knight. Got one with an old fashioned love song, one who can't, you can't understand a word he says, but he makes some mighty fine wine, and his name's Jeremiah, and he's a bulldog. And then you got this, uh, one dog who's lonely, because one is a lonely number. But three is a magic number, as Schoolhouse Rock taught us all. So this is a truly magical moment we're seeing here. And last, we have uh, the Great Hippo being saved by Underdog from a bunch of ghost peppers in a graveyard. This uh, one's making a last-ditch effort to... Uh, Grab the great hippo by the arm, but he just, yeah, he doesn't do it in time. Underdog's too good for him. And that is that. Um, looks like, uh, Lady Telia is live, and she's doing, uh, color, wow, she's, uh, doing coloring, it looks like. So, that, that's appropriate. This was a coloring stream. She's doing a coloring stream. I'll go ahead and rate her. Uh, so, thank you to everyone who, uh, came and watched and hung out and made conversation. I... Really like seeing you all here. It's always a good time. Um, I, I got nothing else to say, so uh, have a good rest of your day. Have a good weekend, and I will see you all next time. I'll be doing my next stream on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific. And, uh, yeah, so see you then, possibly. Uh, have a good rest of your weekend. Take care.